are listening to This is Oklahoma, hosted by Mike Hearn, telling stories of Oklahomans and those that have made it their home. Before we get into today's episode, I want to tell you a little bit about our current sponsors, uh, the Oklahoma Hall of Fame. As you well know, if you've been following This is Oklahoma, they've been a huge part of this podcast. So this podcast is presented by the Oklahoma Hall of Fame, telling an Oklahoma story through its people since 1927. For more information on the Hall of Fame, go to www.oklahomahof.com and follow them on Instagram for daily updates at Oklahoma HOF. Also, for the podcast, a new sponsor, RCB Bank. Since 1936, RCB Bank has offered progressive products and a friendly service. Come in today to find out more about their loan promotion on new used refinance cars, boats, campers, and ATVs. Visit RCB Bank to learn more. RCB Bank, that's my bank. With approved credit, restrictions apply. Now, let's get into today's episode. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of This is Oklahoma. Mike Hearn here, your host. Back with another episode down at Bedford Studio today day to talk food and technology um i love talking about food not great at technology but we're going to learn about it today gents thank you so much for coming down um you know you've been i mean the business is tap tap eat and we're going to learn a lot about that today but before we do dive into the app and the business that you have created tell people listening who you are and i guess a little bit about your oklahoma story uh, yeah, so I'm Mark Thompson, and uh, I'm one of the kind of co-owners and founders of Tap Tap Eat. Um, I was born in Oklahoma, uh, lived here for 18 years, mm-hmm. uh, went to Edmond Memorial High School and graduated there, uh, spent eight years in Fayetteville, Arkansas, um, having gone to college there, and then eventually found my way back here uh, to Edmond. So I'm all but eight years of my Damn. 42, that sounds old. Uh, <laughs> we can edit that out if you want. <laughs> no, no, I'm proud. I, I'm proud of it. Uh, uh, our, our Oklahoma and yeah. my parents live here um, so yeah I'm, I'm Oklahoma through and through mm-hmm. uh, I'm not that Oklahoma <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I'm Sam I'm one of the other uh, co-owners uh, co-founders of Tap Tap Eat uh, and uh, really one of the big reasons why I'm in in Oklahoma is this is where my grandfather decided to retire uh, mm-hmm. when he got out of the uh, uh, Air Force um, my family traveled uh, we were a pastor's family um, lived in multiple cities in California moved to Texas and went to Southern Nazarene um, because that was the local uh, college on that district and found a job um, right out of college and have been here in Oklahoma since uh, pretty much 1997. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Tap Tap Eat for you guys kind of obviously started as, as, as most businesses do, right? So it's kind of a side hustle. And, and for some of you, it still is, right? You can know it's kind of your thing. Uh, so before we get into like food and tech, how do you like, how do you get, like, where, where does your like passion for tech and food begin? Where does that come from? Um, boy, I don't know. Uh, my passion is probably more more tech than food, mm-hmm. although it's it's evolved. You know, as yeah. we've grown our clients and we've gotten to know you know different business owners and stuff, uh, uh, the the food side is coming on. But no, I was I was caught up in kind of a big oil and gas downturn okay. in 2015, 2016, 2017, somewhere in there. Uh, working at Kimray Oil and Gas, and um, and people were getting laid off left and right. And yeah. you know, I I kind of at the second layoff process I was like man what I wouldn't give for three months severance to try some new idea Uh, because I was kind of tired of getting dragged around you know the ups and downs of oil and gas Um, and so I I, you know I had some technical skill Mm -hmm. and just kind of the wheels started turning and then uh, was running one day with Sam. Uh, Sam Sam and I ran together uh, a lot years ago, mm-hmm. but we, we were still trying to to uh, beat each other on the track. <laughs> uh, and you know, we just were chatting, and, yeah. and our, our skill sets just combined to form one full skill set. I guess we're kind of two halves mm-hmm. of somebody who's you know maybe really talented. So we started talking. It's like, hey, I think we could do this. And yeah. I, I was. Um, uh, not not nervous. Let's see. I was uh, so loosely attached at that point uh, to my job and where that career mm-hmm. was going that it was like, yeah, I'll, I'll I'll do whatever. Like, <laughs> yeah, perfect yeah. opportunity to try something. Exactly. Because right? exactly. it's either that or get another job. And like, yeah. This is the time that I like. Most people who stuck, who some of people are stuck in nine to five jobs, right, or eight to six or whatever it is, and they would love 
three months to go trial something. I wanted yeah. it. I didn't get laid off. Yeah. So we actually pitched our first uh, contract agreement um, and got it, and mm-hmm. then I didn't get laid off. And so those first six months of working on, uh, you know, trying to get it to production were really yeah. spent from, you know, 9 p.m. to 3 a.m. The real start of life, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kids to bed, and now I'm going to work for as long as I can. That's exactly right. Yeah. And then wake up and go to work the next day. Yeah. 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 Sam, what about you? Yeah, the, kind of that intersection between you know food and technology. Um, I, I would I would say uh, it, it almost seemed to be only afforded to these billion dollar companies mm-hmm. that could put together these you know IT technology teams or spend the money to make really slick applications yeah. work for their business. And I, um, you know, running with Mark, and I saw some of the stuff that he built for uh, um, Oklahoma Christian and the the team that we coached together there. Mm-hmm. I knew he had the skill set on the front end, and uh, uh, where I come from, I, I had the skill set kind of on the infrastructure on the back end. I was like, oh sure, you know, he approached me, and I was like, well, this is fun. I've kind of always wanted to develop because I've been mainly focused on infrastructure, yeah. and so I got to be able to throw in with him and uh, do some development work, and you know, been having a blast. Uh, yeah. I still kind of do tap tap beat on the side and. And Mark still does it, you know, full time. Um, yeah. uh, but what we essentially wanted to do is be able to offer that technology to, you know, small and medium sized restaurants mm-hmm. uh, to be able to kind of compete with the big dogs. Um, and that's why it, kind of where it, it intersected, where it came from. Yeah. And, and, and it was always centered around ordering food then? Uh, yeah, always. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Uh, you know, I, uh, every morning when I would drive to Kimray to work, um, I would literally be brushing my teeth and ordering my Starbucks coffee at the same time because I didn't want to waste a second of right. sleep. Yeah, yeah. So cool. it just kind of dawned on me. Um, there were other companies kind of doing this, but it was not prevalent, especially in the Oklahoma City area at that mm-hmm. time, 20, 2016. And I just thought, I, I could build this. I need restaurants to you know, yeah. partner with, but I could build them something good. Yeah, um, I just need to just need to try. So. Yeah, and then like I said, you need to pitch somebody, right? And mm-hmm. once you have it set up, and that person says yes, you're like, oh, oh shoot, <laughs> <laughs> this is actually happening now. Like we have a business now, yeah. right? You're like it's all great, and then it's all an idea until someone says, yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's do it. Yeah. And, and, it, and it's great that it's free to them, right, isn't it? And the whole system, is, it's free to them until they get an order through it and then it comes through that way, which it's brilliant. It's no-brainer for them because it's, you know, all the work and the, all the initial work's on your end, isn't it? And mm-hmm. it's, mm-hmm. I mean, like, once people figure this out, like, I'm sure the business has grown last year with COVID and everything else. And, and you know, from that initial idea, it's great to, to see, and, and I'm glad that we're in to talk about it. Uh, so, who was that first business then? Are they still around? They're still around. Meaning, are they still yeah. in the restaurant business? No, yeah, like, they are they are. still upon because restaurant business is cutthroat, as we all know. Um, yeah, so I, you know, I knew one person. I don't know if Sam knew people, but I knew one person in, in restaurants, yeah. and they were with Alfredo's Mexican Cafe, and he was a friend growing up. His name's Kelly Allen, mm-hmm. um, and he was kind of operating as the general manager for Alfredo's, and I knew the, the ownership family as well, um, kind of friends with their with their daughter. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, you know, literally, we went to the the one entry point to the restaurants that that I knew. Yeah. And, you know, kind of we were eager and we were like, you know, do you want this? And it's kind of funny, uh, you know, Kelly said, well, yeah, that sounds all, sounds good, but why don't you build us a catering management system first? Because mm-hmm. that's a, kind of a pain point for us right now. And I was so eager to do something. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, oh, okay. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. How hard can that be? Yes. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> And yeah, Sam laughs because Sam, <laughs> <laughs> Sam's kind of always my voice of reason. Yeah. Uh, and I'll say yes to just about any any development project yeah. or functionality enhancement that somebody wants. I'm like, yeah, I'll have it done you know, next week. And Sam just laughs at me. Yeah. So you have no idea <laughs> yeah. what you're doing yet. Do you? like, trying to figure I, it out. There's a, there's a factor of like two or four. You just need a double or a quadruple. Yeah. Like it's probably more realistic. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you're better off with like what is it saying? I'll I'll get you know it'll be done in a month, and then in a week you're like I've done it, or in two weeks you've done it, rather than saying I'll do it in a week. And you're like oh, I, I've we can't have a yeah, life. I've gotten now better. For seven days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so so yeah, for you take those three months, you get the first client, um, and then it's like you know it works for them. 
which is they I guess they they were kind of like the first tester right they're like mm. you know the first one with it's it's real world it's being applied and mm. and they're seeing you know you can take those results of what they're saying to you to others and be like look mm -hmm. this works like mm -hmm. what do you think so is that after that you guys thought I mean this is a thing now as well as working full time <laughs> yeah. Well, I had quit. Uh, we we oh, got okay. yeah, we got close to production. Mm -hmm. uh, March of 2017 is when gotcha. we finally went to production, just with catering mm -hmm. uh, on their side, and they had a pretty established catering business. And um, and I you know I realized, and I Sam probably remembers, you know we we had dinner together one time. We were talking about the business. And it was mm -hmm. like we're gonna fall on our faces if we don't have somebody full full time supporting yeah. them during the day. I can't do my job somewhere else and you have your phone going off and have yeah. my phone going off and not be be able to do it and so i i, I kind of took you know that that leap of faith and i was lucky mm -hmm. to be in a spot where i could my wife yeah. uh you know was working had full-time uh insurance and, and benefits and uh and it, it's just kind of as probably most business ideas mm -hmm. there's a, there's a certain timing to it and it just kind of came together yeah. where i could i could see uh, i'm going to jump off into this and sink or swim but i, I think we can swim mm -hmm. kind of how it happened <laughs> yeah that, that must have been a fun conversation to have right i, I don't know <laughs> like, it with, was with me or well with i mean just like well also employment. like with you and you and your wife no, to I, say like i'm going to give this a go but also mm -hmm. like to be like this is it's here now like yeah. what we've been working on is here I, I would say that our wives are like really a key to that success absolutely mm -hmm. you yeah. know you gotta have that support otherwise yeah. it's not gonna be you know it's rocky enough mm -hmm. to try to start a business yet alone not to have support so it's been right. pretty good there yeah so so for people listening who are like what is the app uh, what does it all work out like explain exactly then what tap tap e is before we go any further because there might be people pulling out their eyes right now thinking what are you talking about yeah how much time do you have <laughs> a long time <laughs> <laughs> you said you were free all night so <laughs> yeah. you, you know at its at its core it's food ordering um for for customers mm -hmm. and then what's key is really how we get that data uh, the order data into the restaurants okay um but you know our, our biggest part of our product is just you know you can go to you know, all american pizza go to their website there's a big order now button that puts you into our portal it's just mm -hmm. a web portal um and you know we take really great pride in making the menu uh, completely functional mm -hmm. so you know you want a, a hawaiian pizza but take the pineapples off the left half and add, you know, onions and, mm -hmm. and jalapenos to the right half. You know, it, whatever you can do and whatever charges and everything are associated yeah. with that, we really want uh, to give that to the customer. Uh, and we do it in a way um, that doesn't, you know, bog them down in the checkout process mm -hmm. um, and in a way that honors the restaurant's rules. So, there, you know, all of our restaurant clients will tell us, like, well, can customers do that? Well, yes, they yeah. can. We don't really want them to. Right. So let's tuck it way down here and make yeah. it a little bit harder to get to right. so that we we kind of encourage them to order what they should be ordering. Gotcha. Um, but a lot, of, a lot of detail goes into that. Mm -hmm. um, and then we will transact the payment. Um, and then one, once the payment is transacted, we'll actually send that uh, order information to the restaurant and then to their printers in the, in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's a key part of our process is, um, yeah. you know, uh, one of our Mexican restaurants, they've got four printers in the, in the kitchens for different food stations. So literally, you know, within seconds after the order goes in online, there's, yeah. there's nobody that has to sit there to receive it on some tablet or a phone call or anything like that. Yeah. It just starts printing right, right up alongside their uh, in-store orders. That's yeah. kind of seamless. Yeah. Right. Like that's the, idea. the idea is to make it as effortless and as easy for someone to order and also someone on the other side to two, receive that order because, it, yeah. you know, I'm sure like people have dealt with other stuff in the past or then, you know, when new technology comes out, right, there's nothing worse than you getting a phone call and say, this order's wrong. I'm mm -hmm. like, and the restaurant getting a bad review about it, and like it's not my fault. Sure. Um, yeah. Who's to blame there? Yeah. Yeah. Right. And and you know you don't want to be on the hook for any of that either because you're providing a service, mm -hmm. aren't you? Right. Um, so with that data, then do you give that? Can you give that data like of you know what these customers are ordering, like all that valuable information that comes through ordering, mm -hmm. being a consumer on the other side, the, all the value that the, the business would love. Do you get to give them that as well. We do. Yeah. That's yeah, we, the value to them, right? It that's is. Huge. It's, that's really valuable. It, it's huge. Yeah. Um, whereas, uh, 
something that kind of we're dealing with now is that there's a lot of platform apps mm -hmm. where uh, those restaurants are potentially giving their customers information over to a platform app. What we're essentially offering is, you know, we are your online ordering system. All the data mm -hmm. goes through it is yours, email addresses, phone numbers, delivery addresses, mm -hmm. you know, assuming the customer wants to receive that stuff. Um, and it's extremely valuable because yeah. they're can draw from it and continue to you know communicate and have those connection points with those customers mm -hmm. because it is their online ordering system yeah and you give that to the marketing department and they run with it well mm -hmm. some of them are the business that they, they are the head of everything right yeah. it's a small business and you know if you're spending ads on facebook or wherever it is that you're doing your marketing and you don't have you know you have a limited amount of marketing dollars that information is extremely valuable mm -hmm. uh, i'm sure you've had some great reviews from from businesses and continue to have reviews is it are we up to 140 location stores now that have uh, using yeah, it i don't have an exact count but that's pretty i think close, the website yeah. today said at 140. okay there you and go. i think the orders were at like sixty-five thousand, maybe yeah. is that uh, multiply by 10 so Okay. Hundred fifty thousand. That I'm missing a zero. Yeah. <laughs> That's not freaking bad, is it? For That's a few a years, and, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you like when you, I, I, people always ask me, you know, when you look at like reach and following and stuff like that, like how do you quantify that? I'm like, put it in a stadium, right? Or put it in multiple um, stadiums, and then you realize how many orders and put butts in seats, mm -hmm. like. That's a lot of meals, mm -hmm. you know? Even if it's one person ordering, they're using they, they eat the same restaurant on a Friday for the last four years. Mm -hmm. Like, that's still, like, that's, you know, 200 orders or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Like, it's, that's pretty awesome to have that. Mm -hmm. uh, tell so, so now you know what Time Type Eat is and you have businesses around Oklahoma or are they all over the country? Uh, around Oklahoma. Okay. Uh, we've got a couple. We, we, you know, we've been a little bit in Texas and, mm -hmm. and just one City Bites location that's in Wichita. Yeah. Um, but primarily we've been in Oklahoma. Uh, we'd love to eventually expand sure. a little bit bigger, but you know, we've really just been in our backyard so far. Yeah. And, and still, like, in the grand scheme of a business, still early on, like, mm -hmm. you know, it's profitable. You've got a team now. Mm -hmm. So you have a few employees now on board, which, yeah. I mean, how, how was it when you got to that first point and you're like, we, we can hire somebody now? Yeah, it was. Uh, every process is, <coughs> excuse me, from the. <coughs> sorry, that pork katsu from Sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to that later. <laughs> yeah, every uh, you know every decision point in a growing business, as I'm sure you're yeah. you're aware, is um, it's just a, it's just new. It's a new mm -hmm. territory. Like, how do we do this? Well, we figure it out. Well, do we have enough money to do this? Well, maybe, maybe not. Yeah. Um, what is our predicted you know future earnings or profit or loss well we don't know because yeah. it's brand new <laughs> you know so it, it was really exciting we we got down to uh what was it, kind of fall 2019 and, and we're starting to see pretty solid you know monthly revenues mm -hmm. and um we had three interns at the time we called them interns they were they were paid you know yeah. hourly but we like to refer to them as interns <laughs> yeah and they were college kids um a couple from oklahoma christian university and then uh, one from ou and the first one was getting ready to graduate. Uh -huh. And so we thought, well, he's experienced now. He knows what we do and how we yeah. do it. So let's pull him on full time. And, it, and the timing really was uh, just ideal Perfect. yeah, for us to yeah. be able to afford him. And then we saw um, the, no the next one was going to graduate that April of, uh, of 2020. And we thought, well, if we just continue this traje mm -hmm. trajectory, then we'll probably have enough to hire him too. And then the third one literally graduated the, the next yeah. December. So we had him just kind of lined out and, and we're planning a nice linear traje trajectory mm -hmm. of, of revenue to be able to to actually afford help. Yeah. And, uh, and we were getting excited about that. Yeah. And then, uh, and then the pandemic, <laughs> and then March rolls around. Yeah. Oh my gosh! Yeah, yeah. I mean, for, for, that might have been good some to some to some degree in the long run, right? Oh yeah. But initially, well, no, like, no. Well, yeah, it was well, kind like, of how, how how what it, I mean, what happens when the NBA sends people home in Oklahoma on a Wednesday, like? Okay. What's going through your mind so that's <laughs> happening? So I, I guess we're not tired of talking about the pandemic yet. I mean. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm interested because I, I think, I mean, it makes total sense to me that this would, it's perfect timing. As bad as the pandemic is, it's been great for some businesses and many which have been on my podcast and told me about it. I think one of these businesses is probably, you've been successful because of what is sadly what has happened in the pandemic, right? There's been a good effect from it and you guys might have, we were fortunate sense? to be yeah. where we were. Right. Well, nobody planned the pandemic. Of course and, not. You know, yeah. We thought there's probably some organic growth to online ordering over mm -hmm. the next few years, so we're in a good spot here, but yeah. it certainly didn't. Right. Online that. businesses went yeah. 
were very you know successful during the pandemic because yeah. it was easily to order and people would take out yeah. thankfully restaurants developed take you know some of them didn't have takeout did they and now they right. do which is right. thankful to most people I, I feel like the pandemic accelerated a lot of mm. things that were kind of already in the works yeah you know uh, a lot of restaurants were you know looking at online ordering looking at some takeout mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden pandemic hit and you had to have it and that's where mm-hmm. you know the, the phone just went nuts and yeah. not just the phone went nuts it was our existing um, clients all of them wanted brand new menus all of them changed everything yeah. um, and the the business you know doubled online because it had to right and so it was you know I, I think uh, I think for a lot of our clients we're really really happy to have a local you know, online ordering company right. to be able to pick up the phone and call <clears throat> and not have to wait, you mm-hmm. know, uh, on hold to try to figure out how to make some adjustments to a menu. Yeah. Um, so it's, you know, you can go talk to them and they'll kind of sing our praises. Um, and I think it's just been really awesome to work with right. a bunch of local Oklahoma restaurants. Yeah, no doubt. Um, with a local Oklahoma, you know, technology company. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because, I mean, you're right. Like, there's nothing worse than being stuck on hold, right? Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. like, the rest of the country is also on the, on the line. Every yeah. restaurant in the world is trying to, or every restaurant in the country is trying to get a hold of whatever system that they're all using. And, so you the, know. The, the story on that week of the pandemic, though, you know, I we remember, I think because we're from Oklahoma, and it was the Thunder game that yeah. kind of kicked everything off on a Wednesday night. And uh, I, Sam and I had been talking, uh, you know, just a day prior, and, and I, I remember telling Sam, like, I'm a little close to kind of being anxious or, or mm-hmm. somewhat burned out. And I was, I was in grief. My wife had passed away um, a, a month earlier. Mm-hmm. And I was starting to get back into work, and um, I was starting to feel like. Uh, and Sam, Sam you know, just said, "Hey, just start taking you know a day off every yeah. week during the, during the week. Just take a day. Go back running. Go take care out. of yourself. Yeah. yeah. And I thought, oh, awesome. Yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Sam. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then the not win- like some business partners are like he needs to be in work now. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And then the win- you know the the, win- the thunder game happened, and then we were really sitting around you know that Thursday or Friday kind of mulling over the idea of like, hmm, I wonder if the pandemic that is now fastly upon us, is that going to, are we going to see some like decline or are we going to see some growth or we, we literally, yeah. maybe we're kind of stupid. I well, don't know. No, I mean, Looking everyone's back, in yeah. that position, right? Because I mean, every industry not, no, for the most We literally part, had you know. no idea yeah. what was about to happen. And then, you know, the next week, uh, you know, Governor shuts down, uh, you know, in-store dining, yeah. and we're watching our numbers, and they go up and up and up, and and there was a feeling of wow, like right, yeah, <laughs> our revenue this month is going to be a lot more than we thought, you know, yeah. and it was exciting, and we started seeing kind of record days, uh, and then into literally maybe maybe seven or ten days later, mm-hmm. uh, we had grown our sales by a factor of three. So the number of customers hitting our sites, the number of orders going through, the the load on our system was a one. Now it's a three. Yeah, and stuff is starting to fail. Right. Yeah. You can't grow. Uh, we I don't know. We we could not have foreseen that. Sure. And so we didn't have you know the correct infrastructure in place. Some of our core functionality was breaking, and it went from being ah this is pretty cool. This is exciting. Yeah. So like know, we have legit growing pains right yeah. now. <laughs> for for quite a while actually. Yeah. So you know I, like I said I I was going to take a day off each week, and then as soon as that hit, I literally <laughs> think I worked the next sixty days straight, mm-hmm. including the weekends. Like yeah. it just didn't stop because. We didn't have the staff either. Right. I had one one full time employee at the time, and nobody to just hire yeah. immediately to train up and know the system. So well, and some of the tech stuff, like it's, you do it because you understand it and have sure. developed it, yeah. and it's like you try and explain it to whoever. Like yes, yeah. we needed it's help. Not work. We needed yeah. help, but we we didn't have enough time to even train up yeah. any sort of help so we just we just plowed through it yeah. Sam and I had a lot of late nights <laughs> <laughs> yeah and, uh, and a lot of all day Saturdays where we're just trying to just tread water and, and stay mm-hmm. you know ahead of the poten- whatever potential problem right. might happen next well there's like I mean well, there's so many quotes about in panic situations you grow more than you you know the growth comes from from that stuff right but as a small business and as a kind of still a startup you know you are uh, like I said, no, no one planned the pandemic. It's just thrown at you. And it's like, okay, can we figure this out? Or is this going to be the end of Tap Tabby? And it's <laughs> going to be the end of it because of like we were like, getting so much success, the last the systems are failing. And, you know, it, like I said, for 60 days, it must have just been 
serious pain like, yeah, well, every really day was. you know it's you're in the battle in the trenches you know, yeah. in your laptop i guess every every day for 60 days staring at that screen fear, fear drinking day, starbucks friday, all day yeah, it was i remember fearing friday nights because yeah. that's when you know everybody's ordering online you know it's right. the normal load and then a friday night i was like are we going to be able to print tonight you know is uh, we used a third-party print service and mm-hmm. it and the writing was on the wall they even said they were going to abandon their product at the end of the year so we knew we had to rewrite it yeah but it was a you know it's just a that, that's kind of our core functionality yeah. is being able to take that online order and print it um and you know within you know a few weeks <laughs> we were we were rewriting that thing to get it out um and then we had to convert all of our systems that right. did any kind of printing over to our own homegrown printing system yeah but now it's been you know, like it's easy to look back a year yeah. later. Like it's a, it's you know, my kind of like a rock in our business. Right. You know, the print an order to a kitchen. Yeah. On our own technology uh, that we yeah. built, yeah, as Which, fast as we possibly could. So yeah, I woke up. We had a couple bad Friday nights, like Sam of said. Of course, yeah, it happens. And, and so our our system gets jammed up. And not only are we not printing orders, but if you try to go and access the dashboard to view the orders, uh-huh. you couldn't get in because we were jammed up. It's so much. And so stuff customers are showing too. up ready for their food and of course every everybody's yeah. you know the pandemic has got everybody on edge yeah, and so right. the poor managers of, of our clients you know they're taking the brunt of this this yeah. anger by the customers and i knew it and we felt horrible and we were yeah, working course, as fast yeah. as we could to fix it but i remember waking up on a saturday morning in april after a, some friday night failure to you know our largest client at the time you know their ceo i've got a text message waiting for me after i've stayed up till you know one right. a.m. Yeah, yeah, yeah and he's like i don't know what's happening but this needs to be fixed by tonight or else we're pulling out yeah you know <laughs> that's the that's, that's the serious load of stress yeah. that that we were under and and so we pulled it <laughs> yeah. yeah and uh and said some prayers and and Kept figured going, it out so, yeah and now you're on the other side of it and like i said if that happens you know if, if you get an influx or an in- increase in business that large you have a system that can fix that now. that's right yeah it, it made us better yeah uh, and it was incredibly stressful and you know a lot of people probably have you know a similar type of stories but um we just didn't you know we, we wanted to number one to service the yeah. people who are our clients the best that we could i mean t- you take it personally of course you do yeah, yeah. So you get through that, right? You go through this, you know, like every business is having problems, right? Even on the, like restaurants having issues. And, and I think being in Oklahoma, it seemed that like there was a grace period, right? Of people who understand uh-huh. that this is not normal. We're figuring it out. You know, I think if you might have been in a northern state where people don't give you grace periods, like being in Oklahoma probably helped. Uh, but you get through that and you start to see the light at the end of the tunnel and, and you know, orders are coming through, you're printing, taking on, you know, triple the amount of business. Where then for, from that point, you know, you start seeing into the future and, and it gives you time to breathe and plan then, doesn't it? Like, how do you plan for the future? And if we can take this on, then we can get to not just tending to the business that we have, but then growing the business, right? And, and, and you know, it's, it's hard enough dealing with incoming orders, but if you're not actively growing the business every day then there might not be orders coming at the end of you know a month two or three month period building a pipeline so where do you go from there to like find new business get involved and then i guess you know build the future of tap tap out of maybe out of the city out of the state and you know mm-hmm. not a five-year plan because people make plans that in there you know yeah. very rarely do you stick to that but you know what's that next phase after after the pan, you know, after the initial pandemic hit, before like a strategic planning, yeah. planning, planning comment, um, I, I would kind of just ba- bump back um, during that pandemic. You know, we did have problems, but on the flip side, you know, I know all the restaurants were having problems. Yeah, they could only take call in orders, and a lot of restaurants only have one phone line. Yeah, which means you can only take one order for as however long that takes. Even if you have four phone lines, which you know is maybe average for a larger restaurant, they can only take four orders at, within this. And you've got to have four people to take those orders. Yeah. That's where like online ordering just, you know, well, our, our system theoretically can take a thousand orders a second. You know, it's, mm-hmm. we can take tons of orders. So um, yeah, we were, you know, different times we were overloaded, but at the same time, like the, we were just a, a lifeline um, mm-hmm. to a lot of the restaurants in the community yeah. to be able to just 
get orders because the community wanted to support them. Right, you know, that was, was encouraged, it was right? It was encouraged to go out and shop local was, and, and yeah. eat local and, and do that. And um, I mean, it, you know, I, I, I don't know what the stat is. Somewhere between 20 and 30% restaurants, you know, had to close down because yeah. they just couldn't make it during the pandemic. But mm. being able to at least accept an order online um, was a way for the restaurant to be able to get paid. It's yeah. just nice. Oklahomans, working for Oklahomans, literally serving Oklahomans. So yeah. It's, it's kind of nice. Yeah, our, our kind of close to home story with that. I know you've interviewed Rachel Cope, uh-huh. and uh, you know we we had been hitting up the eighty four hospitality group, trying to get their concepts, mm-hmm. you know, to, to partner with us, yeah. and had been uh, on, we'd piqued their interest, but they, we, you know we weren't successful yet. And they right. had Goro Ramen in the Plaza District, uh-huh. and um, uh, Goro didn't have an online ordering solution, and so. Uh, they were getting you know phone calls just ringing off the hook, but mm-hmm. they were also getting posts on their Instagram uh, that said, "Hey, uh, you know, I, was, I tried to order. The phone was busy like eight times in a row. I'm going yeah. elsewhere." So it was just literally blat- losing blatantly business. obvious yeah. to them that they were losing business. Yeah. And uh, we we drove down to Goro. Um, our salesperson Angela uh, and I drove down to Goro on a Friday afternoon you know mm-hmm. with our masks on during the pandemic and uh, kind of got contract agreements with them installed our device on their network and uh, they were calling us all day Saturday like are you ready are you ready are you ready <laughs> we're like no like yeah. this takes time yeah. to do it right I don't want to overlook something and then you know right. suddenly we've lost thousands of dollars because there's bad data right the well this is your one chance too right because yes. you know 84 hospitality they have a f- bunch mm-hmm. of concepts yeah. in the city and, and yeah. everyone talks don't yeah. they so you know you don't want to ruin that first opportunity no, by and, rushing they, they, they pushed us as fast as we could go and finally at 4.30pm on Saturday 24 hours later Later, yeah. we put them into production. They posted on their Instagram, hey, order now, you know, through this link, and literally did twenty twenty six hundred dollars between yeah. four thirty PM and closing on on the Saturday. And it was like what just happened? Light bulb. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what just happened? Here? Yeah. <laughs> they saw it. <laughs> yeah. 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 And so it's stories like that. We just were working as fast as we possibly mm-hmm. could. So Yeah. So now it's slowly building out and, and going into the future now, right? It's mm-hmm. now that restaurants are starting to open back up. Hopefully it helps more, but, you know, it's more about restaurants succeeding and, and now that hopefully they've stayed afloat through it and are now coming back and opening up to more. There are, the, the uh, you know, space is getting mm. much more competitive for us. So yeah. we really didn't meet much competition in our local area uh, for a few years there. It was right. kind of a nice place to be. It's like, well, we'll just kind of grow as we grow. Yeah. Um, but out of the pandemic, now there's a lot of different uh, solutions sure. out there. People see that idea and yeah, they're like, oh, right. we can do this. And, right. and they cut margins, right, mm-hmm. to compete with mm-hmm. you that's guys. Right. And now you have to, you know, value, you know, and your customer comes to you as a value client. And, yes. hey, this company just came in and said they'd cut, you know, whatever you guys get by 5% or sure. whatever. And you're like, oh, sure. now we have to rethink. And, yeah. you know, it's... But coming out of the pandemic, what we're finding, um, yeah, restaurants are, are very understaffed right now. Yeah. And the ownership, you know, is literally having to go into the kitchen to work. One mm-hmm. of our clients told me, is like, I'm supposed to have 14 people on staff, and I have five, and that includes mm-hmm. me and my wife. And they just can't get people uh, to, yeah. to work right now. So it's it's been a bit of a dry season for us in terms of, of uh, growth and number of clients, mm-hmm. largely because the owners don't even have right. time to talk to you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so we're, we're seeing that. Uh, it's just, boy, this kind of yo-yoing effect of the pandemic and how it is affecting the different industries mm-hmm. and different types of business. It just keeps on going. Yeah. I don't feel like we're quite yeah. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. Because like you, you guys have gone through it. You guys are ready and are on the other side of it. But now they're not. Yeah. Right? it's the opposite. That's and right. It's like, hey, we're ready when you are, but they're not getting orders, or they are getting orders, but the staff. It's you know, we we went to vacation in Florida a couple, you know, last week, and and I'm like walking in, you know, there's eight of us with the family, and I'm like, there's tables everywhere. You know, and they're like, it's gonna be an hour. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. what? Mm-hmm. And then I realized, like, oh, it's because you guys don't have anyone to, you know do the tables like, yeah. uh, great I guess I'll sit at the bar for now which it sucks right it sucks to be a consumer but it also sucks to be on the other side because mm-hmm. like we've got people wanting to come in and, and you know turnover would be great if we could get people in and out and it means mm-hmm. more money but you know, it's, it, right it, we will finally hopefully get get the other side of it and people will stop getting checks and get, get back to yeah. work <laughs> hopefully uh, 
but yeah it's you know it's i'm sure it's great now to be on this side of it and you guys have the system and, and it's you can focus on growing the business and mm-hmm. reaching out to concepts rather than just an individual restaurant yeah. and saying hey like if you have um you know like the good egg group right mm-hmm. yeah. you have however many they you know keith and heather will do great things and Okay. We'd love to you partner with you. Yeah, we'd love to partner with you, too. Yeah, Dave, yeah. Keith, if yeah. you're listening. <laughs> if you're listening, yeah. I've talked yeah. to you once. Yeah, we've, yeah. Been in, we've been in conversation with them. Mm-hmm. Um, but, again, there's a lot of different solutions out there. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I think we're still seen as kind of a smallish startup. Sure. Um, even though our, our the quality of our product and services, I think, is really, really solid. Yeah. But getting that communicated to, you know, big thinkers or, or mm-hmm. larger organizations is a challenge for us yeah yeah i mean getting in the door and, and speaking to the right people is the hardest part and yeah, you know that's it's, right every restaurant's open so you can walk in but very rarely do you speak to the person that you need to speak to and they're so busy that that message never gets passed on yeah. mm-hmm. um which is well, you know it's a process yeah and then like what mark was saying they're just so busy it's really hard to get their attention Mm-hmm. But that's where I, I, I just still see a real niche for our product because we can take that order and print yeah. to the kitchen. They don't necessarily need to rely on the help that they're trying to find right now. Right. Well, you know, we kind of are becoming an arm for them. Like yeah. They don't need somebody to man the phone and put that order into a POS or you know handwrite it and mm-hmm. take it back to the kitchen. Well, we're effectively doing that for, for that restaurant. So they can focus on the production side of things. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, uh, we've had some interesting uh, growth in areas that we mm-hmm. didn't necessarily anticipate. So yeah. um, we offer room service now. Um, if you're at any of the Oklahoma State Park lodges, uh, they have Foggy okay. Bottom kitchens yeah, yeah, there, yeah. and uh, and we we are the online ordering provider for Foggy Bottom. And they said, hey, we want people to be able to order from their rooms, and yeah. so they input their room number. We validate it, and there's like a big you know room room service icon on the ticket, and they just take it to their room. So you know, how you good know. is that? Yeah. yeah. That's I mean because they've done the the state parks thing they've Foggy Bottom have done a great job right? yeah, because have. when you go to state parks the food has usually been trash hasn't mm-hmm. it and now they've come in and thankfully you know they've invested some money the state has invested some money in putting great restaurants in you know going to a state park and getting good food mm-hmm. and Foggy Bottom has that yeah. contract for all of them yep. so it's nice that you know I mean. Who doesn't want room service right? yeah. when they go on yeah. when they go to the state park and stay in a lodge? Yeah. So, uh, so that's awesome. that's been fun. And like I mentioned earlier, like I'll say yes to just about anything. And one uh, client came on recently that's been dominating my uh, <laughs> my my life and my stress level. Yeah. Uh, although I love it, is uh, Sandwichi. Yeah. Tell us about that because that recently happened in Oklahoma City, and and some people might they probably definitely would have seen it if you love food and follow enough food bloggers. Yeah. Uh, I couldn't get down there, but it looks. Very. The first time I saw it was when Rachel headed down to Dallas before what about a month, mm-hmm, month yeah, ago, mm-hmm. and I was like, "Why are there strawberries in a sandwich?" Like, <laughs> and, 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 and you know, kiwi or whatever that is. I'm like. And, and no crust it's, like, <laughs> yeah. it's very interesting what is that and then you know then you said oh they come into town and we partner with them so. yeah so this grew out of uh, Instagram uh, yeah. we've been trying this year kind of strategically to grow our uh, mm-hmm. social media presence and as we were growing it we started to use that as a uh, the direct messaging tool to try to use that as a sales channel as well yeah. Um, and, and we, you know, one of our staff members kind of came across their site and was interested and mm-hmm. sent them a direct message on Instagram. And it, like so many things, like just the timing was right. Yeah. Like they had a lot of pain points in their process. They were using tools that really weren't designed for, for what they did. Not, not that almost any tool is quite designed exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, they, now it is. <laughs> they're, they're um, uh, forgive me if I'm jumping in here. Go ahead. I, uh, they... Uh, some of their operations team comes from the retail side. Okay. So they're really familiar with like inventories and selling out and Shopify. Uh-huh. And that's what they were using. They were using Shopify to essentially collect their orders. They're dumping all those orders to spreadsheets, man- manipulating the spreadsheets, yeah. sending them over to the production team, you know, printing them out on, you know, these large, you know, print papers to essentially just fulfill the orders. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then when we contacted them and, and had that essential initial conversation, I was like, well, this to me is just a merging of our online ordering and catering mm-hmm. um, technologies. It just kind of makes sense. Uh, and, and they're another one that's really kind of pushed us mm-hmm. to become better. Uh, because of their retail background, the way that they allow orders yeah. is they um, have a time. You can order, you know, Sunday at five o'clock in Oklahoma City, okay. and they sell out, you know, within. A, and they say we have a hundred of these. This mm-hmm. is how many. 
That's really interesting. They, they set an inventory, and once they hit their yeah. inventory, they, they close down their site. And so I, I, we've never seen that amount of traffic on our site before. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. so, you know, when we, we had to find tools just to mm-hmm. identify um, our shortcomings in our applications um, to make sure that we could handle their load. Yeah. Um, and we, you know, you know, admittedly, we're... Uh, grossly underperforming you know what we could right. do for them and the nice thing is like we were able to find that out before we did launch with them um, but that's just another example of the, yeah. the restaurant client has kind of really helped push us to become just a better uh, more nimble you know right and have that tool now company. for any others that decide that they want to do that mm-hmm. that's really I yeah I never thought of that it's really interesting is uh, so so they came up there how long are they here for are they just pop they, so their their model is that you know they travel from large city to large city okay and they use their uh, social media uh, influencing power mm-hmm. to attract you know foodies and uh, yeah. and kind of high profile people in those new cities and they'll they'll give them food to sample sure. and then suddenly they've kind of multiplied their reach and mm-hmm. so you know before they ever start they've already done a, a great marketing job yeah. you know before they get there for that first week they usually go to a place for commit to a place for two weeks okay and then depending on if you know there's some good uh, momentum going into the second week then they'll often times to stay a third week as well yeah. so we've given them a pretty good show here in oklahoma city yeah and i figured i keep seeing it everywhere <laughs> yeah and uh and so they're going to stay here a third week uh, that's as well. awesome so we're excited yeah we went um I, I, I get to take a business trip to San Francisco, which I don't get to say stuff like that every day. <laughs> but that, yeah. was, that was their last place, and, and we were ready to go to production, and so I wanted to make sure I was there, you know, just right. full service, uh, ready for anything. Yeah, and, uh, which so none of the other big companies are doing, are they? No. no. They're not sending someone in, no. like, let's develop the system sure. to stay with you. Like yeah. They're getting the white glove awesome. treatment. Yeah. Yes. Well, I mean, all, all yeah. of our clients are, because we're locals. So right, like, exactly, yeah, yeah. 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 But, you know, uh, kind of met, met them out there, and we've been continuing to hone the details. Mm-hmm. And I kind of nudged them, you know. Keith Tron is their owner, and, and their whole group has been fun to work with. But, you know, it's like, hey, you guys should, you know, try Oklahoma City. You yeah. know, it's like, I know we're kind of a little brother to Dallas, and <laughs> yeah. but I think it'll work, and we'll, we'll, we'll try to help you make it work here. And they were going to go to Denver, mm-hmm. um, and... But their kitchen, they, they always had to find like a kitchen space sure. and, you know, there's a lot of logistics to it and it just wasn't working out really well. So they gave us a call just a few weeks ago and said, hey, all right, uh, I guess we're going to come to Oklahoma City. <laughs> um, yeah. Can you f- help me find a kitchen space? And and I said, yeah, I made one phone call right. you know, to, yeah. our, to the 84 Hospitality Group, to Rachel, and knowing that they had a, a, yeah. a space open, right. you know, in the perfect spot in the in the uh I get them mixed up. Plaza, Plaza District. Plaza yeah. District, yeah. yeah. And she was gracious enough to, you know, give them that spot. And, and uh, it's kind of a w- weird relationship for, you know, one restaurant group to be kind of supporting another right. restaurant Competition. group. Competition. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, Especially in the plaza where, like, Rachel has everything. Like, yes. <laughs> for the most part, yeah. But I, but I think there's also just kind of the pride of, yeah. like, hey, we're Oklahomans. Right. We want to show them, you know, a good experience mm-hmm. here. And, and we want to just, we just want to create something fun, you know. Yeah. And she's got that kind of mentality. And so it just, it, it all came in, all came yeah. together. Quickly. Well, uh, and people don't believe every time you say Oklahoma's got great food, Oklahoma City is has amazing restaurants. People are like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> like they just still don't believe that. And I'm like, read the articles. It's, <laughs> go come here and eat food, and you'll figure it out quick, quick enough. You know, and that's you know people like that. They take a risk to come here, don't they? And mm-hmm. then it, you know now it's they stay in an extra week, which yeah. proves to them and, and others that we have great restaurants here and great service and good people, great people good too foodies, yeah 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 uh so i guess finishing up uh anything that you want listeners to know to tell you to tell business owners that <laughs> aren't using your product to use your product this is your chance to uh plug anything you want to plug yeah i'll i'll jump in um you may have or may not have uh heard you know if you're out there ordering online um, I would just highly recommend you going to the website of the mm-hmm. restaurant and order from there. You mm-hmm. know, if you order from an, an application, uh, like a platform application, a lot of that money um, doesn't go to the restaurant. They yeah. take a huge chunk, up to 30% of that order total mm-hmm. um, is taken away from the restaurant. So I, I would, Which at the very awful. least, like yeah. Oklahomans go to the website of the restaurant and if they have online ordering, 
um, click on that button. That mm -hmm. will really help the restaurants out. And if they don't have online ordering, tell them to call Tap Tap Eat. So there's my plug. <laughs> <laughs> and it's taptapeat.com. Yep, that's right. And then at Tap Tap Eat on Instagram. Yep. yep. Cool. For everyone listening, I'll post those in the description. You can go right to them. Uh, gents, thanks for coming in. Uh, love the product you've uh, you've created. Uh, wish you all the best for the future. Hopefully no more pandemics. Mm -hmm. uh, for everyone else, yeah, we will catch you next episode. Cheers. Thank you, Mike. Thanks, Mike. This podcast is presented by the Oklahoma Hall of Fame, telling an Oklahoma story through its people since 1927. For more information on the Hall of Fame, go to www.oklahomahof.com and follow them on Instagram for daily updates at Oklahoma HOF. Also, huge shout out to RCB Bank for jumping on board to be a sponsor. RCB Bank's loan promotion is here for a limited time. Head into any of their 40 Oklahoma locations to get as low as 1.79 APR on your next car, boat, camper, or ATV. Apply online at rcbbank.com. RCB Bank, that's my bank. Rate and finance with approved credit. Restrictions apply. A member FDIC. Huge shout out to my sponsors. Uh, thank you for listening. We'll catch you next episode. Cheers. Thank you for listening. We are inspired by those around us and hope that you are too. Make sure you subscribe to this podcast on your favorite podcast platform and leave us a review so we can keep telling your stories. For more great Oklahoma content, follow This Is Oklahoma on Facebook and Instagram.